So I've assembled a mod pack for the current playthrough I'm doing and instead of going through all the 169 mods individually, I'm just going to show you guys how I set up my game and there's a few settings that need to be tweaked. First things first, we're going to go into options and mod settings and these mods are sorted by alphabetical order. We're going to go down to M for more trait slots and we're going to set the minimum traits to 3, max to 5, which you can change this to anything you want. I do feel like this is a nice middle ground to where you get some really cool colonists but you don't get anyone that's too crazy. All right, so now I'm just going to do kind of a mini walkthrough for how I set up my game. So new colony, I like to do a variation of Lost Tribe because when you start with the Lost Tribe tech level, you're able to meditate at the anima tree and gain side casting abilities. You can't do that with any other starts. One thing I also like to do is edit the scenario slightly. Under scenario editor, we're going to go to edit mode, add part, and we're going to add random research. And we're going to make research blind until 100% progress. I think this adds a lot of variation to playthroughs. You have to adapt to what research tech you get. That's all I'm going to change in the scenario editor. Next we're going to go for difficulty. So I really like Void and actually I'm working on a custom storyteller that takes a lot of inspiration from Void. But yeah we're going to go to custom difficulty set to standard playstyle losing is fun. So we have all the losing is fun difficulties but we're going to crank the threat skill to 500%. And you can obviously change the threat skill to whatever you want. This affects raid size, infestations, difficulty of quests. It just makes the game harder in general. One thing I will say that I've been thinking about is just lowering disease for frequency down to zero so you don't get any random diseases when you're playing on this high of threat scale a random disease can kill you but I'm not sure about that one because it does throw off the game balance so I'm going to keep the disease frequency at 111. Also no matter what threat scale you're playing on I do like to lower a colonist insta kill down to zero so no one dies from a random bad RNG like headshot for example and let's be real I know there's a lot of people out there that would just like all f4 out of the game if their best colonist dies so this just removes that whole aspect and just to note this is not going to make your colonist invincible by any means and if they get a bad head wound for example they're going to bleed out really quickly but at least with this you get a chance to save them we're also going to lower scary rot down to zero so we can always butcher animals if we get a random manhunting event and also we're going to increase research speed up to 300 percent because we're playing with random research so as for planet size the size i'm currently playing on is the one below default population is going to be crowded and if you want to reduce lag even more especially playing with rim war i believe the smaller maps produce less lag because there's events going going on on the map always. Just note that if you do make the planet size smaller, you're going to have to go into the faction control mod and you're going to have to change the total number of faction groups to appear on the world. On this size, I think like 35 should be okay. 30 and 50 actually ended up being okay, but when I try to crank it up to 80, you get this thing where a bunch of factions spawn on top of each other and this is not good. You're going to want to avoid this, so definitely if you get this situation, just back out, lower the total number of faction groups to appear in the world. And yeah, for this world size, 50 seems to be okay. One last thing we're going to do before we actually generate the world is we're going to go to Rim War and we're going to do player versus all. This will basically make it so you're at war with pretty much everyone. There's going to be like one or two factions on the map that are not going to be at war with you, but they're going to be still really hostile. You can still trade with them, but if you lose really any relation with them at all, then they're going to go to war with you. I also don't really care for the Rim War rival and victory condition. You can just randomly get this if the AI decides to wipe out your rival. So I mean, it's cool for an objective, but I mean, you can just pick any faction and be like, yeah, I'm going to take you out and that can be your victory condition. Condition. But yeah, I generated the map and actually this time I got a bunch of factions stacked on top of each other in the middle. So we're going to have to lower the total number of factions again. We're just going to lower it down to 40. The main thing is after generating your map, just look in the center and make sure there's no colonies stacked on top of each other. It will be like right in the middle. And on this map, we're good. I'm going to select a random starting site. We got this savanna. Let's do it. We got our eight random colonists to choose from. All right, so that's how I create my start. Now we're going to go into the mod settings and we're going to tweak a few more things. The first thing we're going to change is under Billy's improved caravan for formation you can skip the gathering of caravan animals by colonists this is just kind of like a quality of life thing and it makes caravan forming easier to do we're not going to scroll down a bit to gunplay we're actually going to change this to see if we can get 100 101 fine and this mod is just visual i'm not sure why i disabled other stuff but i want to actually re-enable it and add some extra visual effects and some sounds to weapons we're now going to go to lwm's deep storage and we can change the global storing time that it takes to put stuff inside of containers down to zero percent so basically you can just drop stuff inside of containers instantly. I haven't really found the containers are too broken to the point where they need a storing time. So yeah, we're just gonna lower that down to zero for some quality of life. Next, we're gonna go to mad skills and this allows us to lower the skill decay. I don't really know if there needs to be any skill decay. I've found that with the difficulties I play on, it just seems like more of a nuisance than anything. Cause yeah, if you don't have someone working on a skill full time, if you have the default value at 100%, they're pretty much never gonna get to level 20 in any skills. Alternative great 
memory changes around the great memory trait from having the skill decay rate to now increasing the learning rate by 25%. And then I basically remove the daily XP limit. I don't really see a reason why there needs to be a daily XP limit. Next, I just want to add a small note for Ogre Stack. If you're using the Revian Race mod, change artifacts to stack up to like a thousand. Next, if we go to Rim War, there's a lot of settings that you can change. So you can make it hard. You can make it easy. Default. I actually just left it on default because I didn't realize that you can change it to hard. I might do a playthrough with Rim War on hard, but I found with the threat skill at 500% and playing with Void, I don't know if it's necessary to change this to hard. Also, just note, if you do play on hard, you're going to get no alerts if enemies are nearby. I don't know if you can still see them on the map or not. We're now going to scroll down to Tech Advancing Config, Tech Advancing Config. And this one's really important if you're playing Tribal. It allows you to advance your tech level. By default, if you research all techs of your tech level and below, your tech level will rise. But for the playthrough I'm doing, I made it so we only have to research 25% of the tech and our tech level will rise to the next one. And doing this immediately when you're playing with Lost Tribe will raise your tech level up to Medieval. And that's because Lost Tribe does start with a lot of the Neolithic techs. And by the way, I'm playing with a new tech tree mod. Well, it's not actually a new one. I've just never used it before, but it looks really clean. And we can see all these techs over here to the left are Neolithic techs. And there's a few down here like Recurve Bow, Basic Furniture, Basic Prosthetics. And okay, that's it. Then we go to the right here. We got all the Medieval techs. Since our tech level is now Medieval, we're not going to get a tech penalty for researching these like we would if we wanted to research any industrial techs over here. Next thing we're going to do is scroll pretty much all the way down on the mod settings list. And we got change map edge limit down here. We're going to change it to zero. And this just allows you to build at the very edge of the map. I don't recommend walling the edge like this. I've heard it can cause bugs if you try to completely like wall off a side. So if you do want to build on the edge, then only put one part of your wall on the edge just to be safe. All right, there's two more changes we're going to do. We're going to nerf run and gun. These are the settings I'm using. I believe I increased the penalty for heavy weapons and light weapons just so it makes it a bit harder to kite. You can still kite though. And like, for example, if Barkoskos was trying to kite this Solivertherium, which she is not going to be that good at doing because this thing's actually quicker than her. While she was aiming, she was moving slower. But if we disable run and gun, she will move at her normal speed. But then if we re-enable it, if she starts aiming again, then she's going to move at lower speed. And yeah, this thing's too quick. So unfortunately, she was not able to kite it as this thing's base movement speed is higher than her base. But yeah, mainly if you uncheck run and gun, no matter what weapon you're using, you'll still move at normal speed. When you recheck it and they start aiming, then you'll get that movement speed penalty. Final change is under Yeo's Combat 3. I really like this mod for the ammunition system as it makes it kind of painful to use the higher tier weapons, especially when you're playing as Lost Tribe and you have no way to make higher tier weapon ammo. So you got to really decide like, do I want to use the spacer weapon just to mow down that group of muffalo in two seconds or do I want to use a bow? The main reason why I'm using this mod is for the ammo system, but there's also an advanced combat animation. I just ended up disabling this because I wasn't sure if it was balanced or not. It seemed like you were doing more damage in melee. It says basically you attack quicker, but you do less damage, but I feel like you do more damage. I don't know. I just ended up turning it off because I wasn't sure. And now we're going to go down to advanced armor algorithms. I disabled this as well because it seemed like it made armor too broken. Like if you have a really high armor target, arrows cannot really pierce it anymore. I did leave the advanced accuracy algorithm on though. It says that shooting skill affects accuracy more. And one thing I noticed in the base game is that shooting skill does not affect accuracy that much. Like if we look on the accuracy calculator, shooting skill is really affected from zero to like three. But once you get past three, the difference between a level three shooter and a level 20 shooter is not that much. It also depends on what weapon you're using and like at what range you're talking about. But yeah, basically with this checked, shooting accuracy should be more reliant on shooter's skill. And yeah, that's it for my mod pack. These are the settings that I'm using that feel good on this playthrough. Some final tips I would say is if you're getting a lot of lag with Rim War, because there's a lot of events that are happening on the map, I and mean, that can create lag, I would say play with a smaller map. Also, being that we're really far away from any Save Our Ship 2 tech, I I've disabled this mod until we get closer to the space age and the reason why is because if you have this mod enabled and you try to ride your animals on the world map those animals will die so definitely disable this mod until you're ready to make a ship and yeah that's pretty much it those are the settings i'm playing on and if you guys see any mods that are not in my mod list and you think they should be definitely drop them in the comments below and i may add them to my mod list and if you think any settings i've chosen detract from the vanilla experience too much let me know in the comments as well i'm definitely open to feedback with that i want to thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one